Okay, no issues. Okay, okay.
Amal sir, are you ready, sir? Yes, sir, we can start the session, sir. Sir, Peter, sir, can you hear me? So, I thought, sir, so formally you invite uh, our resource person, Mr. Amudan, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, on behalf of uh, Ramkun Sir Technology, Department of Mechanical Engineering, RIT Metcalf Center, and IE. So, we welcome you all for this uh, day 10, session 2 on a short term course on financial analysis. So, today's topic is a hands on session on 2D heat transfer problems. So, this session will be handled by Mr. K. Amudan, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Ramkun Sir Technology. Raja Bolyan. So, the introduction of uh, resource person. So, he has completed his master, uh, bachelor degree in the field of mechanical engineering, Kamaraj College of Engineering and Technology during the year of 2015. He completed his master degree in CADCAM and Methcos Lang Engineering College during the year of 2017. Um, currently, he is working as an assistant professor in Ram Concept Technology for the past uh, two years, more than two years. Uh, his research interest is in CADCAM uh, CAE. He has published uh, two international uh, journal, and also he has published uh, more than three international conferences. So he has attended uh, in reputed uh, courses, seminars, FDP workshop in the various reputed institutions like uh, Advanced Training Institute, Institute University of uh, University College of Engineering, ROIL, and then Indian Institute of Science and Ramkon of Technology. So then he organized so many events in Ramkon of Technology like seminars, FDP workshops, conferences. So and also he pursued online various online courses in uh, universities like MIT, uh, then Cornell University, uh, around five in the relevant area of FEA and also engineering simulations using ANSYS workbench and also mechanics, kinematics, and then dynamics and the uh, mathematic background courses like differentiation, coordinate system and inference series. And also awards and recognition achievements. He is holding uh, the responsibility of NCC caretaker of Ram Kunsa Technology Rajabadam from the academic year of 2019 to 20. And also he, he is uh, working on AI, artificial intelligence field. And also he undergone a one month intern pure internship on artificial intelligence in the Bennett University, Noida. So he is uh, working on that field. So if anybody interested in it means you can contact him. So he is uh, very much interested in that particular field. So in that the short introduction, so I welcome Mr. K. Amudan to start the session. Thank you, Vrito, sir, for your introduction. And uh, for participants, I like to say that uh, on the, uh, in the previous sessions itself, we have uh, uh, seen two problems based on uh, heat transfer. One is a fin problem, one dimensional problem, and other is a composite wall problem. The composite wall problem is solved uh, with the assumption of 2D, uh, 2D plane concept, uh, a heat transfer concept. And I hope that it is very clear because uh, 2D problem in heat transfer with composite wall, if we solve it, it is more than enough. And that particular video link is also available in YouTube. What I have planned for today is, and uh, Actually, there was there was a uh, miss. There was something missing in our schedule that uh, we learned about the beam element and finite element procedure for beam element, but uh, we did not have some introduction about how to solve a beam problem using ANSYS. I like to solve that problem. I'm going to solve the beam problem. Usually, how we follow is we'll be taking a problem from strength of materials uh, textbook and we will be solving it. We can solve it. In the, and, and in the previous classes, I like to uh, and I, we got very we got many queries about that computational fluid dynamics. Whether you are going to organize a separate course for that, and I hope that there are many beginners for uh, computational fluid dynamics. So I will solve a basic pipe flow problem in uh, ANSYS workbench. These two are the uh, these two are the things which I have planned for today's session. And before that, uh, we can have some interactive sessions. Can I open APDL screen and uh, can go it? Within that time, we can.
okay the beam problem what i am going to solve is uh, i am going to solve using mechanical apdl package and uh, participants in beam problem uh, it let's be an interactive session you can type your uh, answers in the comment box in the chat box uh, in beam normally in beam element what are the things we will be finding out are normally in a beam problem what is the parameter output parameter we will be calculating it can anyone put it in the chat box there is a two types of elements bar element and beam element is there what will be the main difference between a bar element and a beam element can anyone answer chat box if that time audible deflection stress strain okay deflection okay stress strain okay okay these are the things you will be finding it very good uh, in addition to that you will be finding two things deflection and theta they will be saying okay right okay, let's let's not go and say that uh, we can have the physics of the problem and find it in bar element and beam element what is the difference between the loading conditions can anyone say it? difference between the loading conditions okay point load udl okay no i am saying the these are the types of loads uh, based on the area of application or point of application you can say point load udl static dynamic okay very good aryan okay these are some types of loads uh, what i want to say is if you are going to solve a problem with bar element from the first class we solved some basic bar element based problems we will be giving a axial bending torsional okay correct axial bending oh yes bar element only will be having a, a axial load or load will be given parallel to the axis okay very good in beam element you will be giving transverse load or load will be given perpendicular to that of the axis of the element or axis of the object let's not go inside the finite element concept simply if you are if you are going to apply a load for a beam a bridge or anything the load will be acting in transverse direction those things we can say it as beam okay now i have started we can go for some physics of the problem and we can enter inside this apdl and we are going to solve using apdl because only in apdl you can see some uh, basic finite element procedure because you can uh, split into the number of nodes you can split and everything you can visualize in apdl when compared to that of the workbench workbench will be colorful but when you are solving in apdl you can you can go with some primitive approach here and next is okay <clears throat> okay this is uh, these are some applications where you can solve your problem assuming that it is a beam so this is a beam here in, in house applications or in in buildings we will be having this beam structure above this structure it will be this this is the member which is going to support the uh, next layers or next floors in this this beam the load is acting in transverse direction this is an example for beam and in the beam types commonly we will be using three types of beams for university based problems or in, in any curriculum we will be having solving three beams one is cantilever beam another one is uh, overhanging beam another one is simply supported beam so if you are having a problem you are going to analyze a vehicle the load the load carrying capacity and the Uh, the capacity with which whether the member of this particular lorry can able to withstand a, uh, a heavy load or not what we can do is you can assume this lorry as a overhanging beam how it is set as overhanging beam is this two tires are taken as the fixed support fixed sorry uh, this uh, this two tires you can take it as supports and this region it is projecting outside the support so this case can be model this Uh, model does a overhanging beam so you will be having arrows here and you can plot the beam here and you will be applying the load and you can find the amount of deflection what is happening and amount of stress that happens in the frame the base frame you can use it as a beam and you can calculate it and these are some assumptions i am saying you need not model the entire vehicle you need not model the entire vehicle and apply the load in three dimensional simply you can make the reduce this problem in in terms of a beam and you can solve it because this can be uh, calculated in static condition itself assuming that it is a static condition and you can calculate it 
the vehicle is able to handle that load in static like uh, condition then you can uh, then you can work out for dynamic condition this is one basic example and another thing is this is an example for continuous beam so you can see a very long beam continuous beam so for these types of beams you can use for assumption symmetrical assumption so you can model only this particular two structures and you can assume that it is a repetitive structure on both the sides and you can solve it and this is and this beam you can solve it as a this 3d model you can solve it as an assumption of a cantilever beam because one end it is going to be fixed and another end it is going to be free a load is going to be subjected at this particular rows so these are some tedious problems but you need not model it as a three dimensional objects you can simply convert it into a one dimensional object and you can analyze it the uh, element what i am going to use for solving this problem is beam 188 it is one unique element it is a two noded element in an uh, ansys apdl package that is also a three dimensional uh, node also three dimensional element also for beam element uh, available with the ansys apdl okay uh, these are some types of uh, beams here you can you can see it you can see these types of beams and these are some various loading conditions this is point load and this is udl and this is uvl this is uvl in both direction it is it is like that it is triangular thing okay and this is the problem today what we are going to solve it using ansys apdl uh, before that i like to give an introduction about a software an online module that is called as beam guru can you all see my screen i hope so you are all able to see my screen you can go to google and you can type and use this online platform to find the normally in beams you will be in strength of materials what you will be doing the two diagrams you will be drawing can anyone say it can anyone name it you will be drawing two diagrams beams when you are learning about beams two diagrams are important what are the two diagrams okay i think shear force and bending moment you will be drawing yes 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 moment of okay shear force diagram and bending moment diagram you will be drawing and for drawing those things you can use this beam guru when you are simply modeling that beam and if you are solving this you will be getting a, a nice shear force diagram and bending moment diagram this is also one example for simulation uh, you need not use paper or pencil you can just verify your answers using this beam calculator beam guru website so i have practiced this problem now i will start a new one okay uh, this is the screen of beam guru website and side at that and at the left side you can see the length supports loads and calculations you are, what you are going to do is you are going to simply input give the give the input parameters and when you give it as calculate you will be getting the beautiful shear force diagram and bending moment diagram of this corresponding beam and uh, another thing is first this version first this platform was available for free so that you will be also able to get the calculation pdf calculations but now what they have done is they are uh, they are advanced into a paid version so that only you can get the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram if you want uh, uh, some calculation and other things i think you should go for a paid version now what we can do is we can model our problem here uh, the cantilever beam is of 5 meter length this is a 5 meter length and uh, you are going to and the, and the beam is subjected to two point loads and one uniformly distributed load let's model this problem so first the beam length you have to give it as 5 meters 5 meters the unit is in terms of meters so 5 meters next is support as this is a cantilever beam what we are going to do is you are going to fix this one end this end can be fixed so you are going for fixed support and this support you are going to give the fixed support so it is asking on the left or right so you are going to fix it at the left side so add it you have completed it next is you are going to give the loads now there are two types of loads two point loads and one uniformly distributed load now first let's we can give the point load for this so first point load it is asking distance from the left edge of the beam so from the left edge it is at a distance of 1 meter so it is at a distance of 1 meter what is the value in terms of kilo newton they have asked it is 3 kilo newton they have also asked the direction for the force 
so it is acting in downward direction the angle if you want to find an inclined force also you can give it if you are calculating manually what you will do is we will be resolving the components and we will be finding it but you can give it directly and give it as add so one more force at the end it is end it is there so here also it is also 3 kilo newton sorry it is at a distance of 5 meters and the value is 3 kilo newton and it is also acting downwards and add another thing is udl starting point so starting point from the left edge, edge it is asking the total length is 5 meter and this is 2.5 this is this one and here it will be 2.5 so it is starting from a distance of 2.5 meters from the left edge and it is, it is ending at a distance of 4.5 meter the value for that is 1 kilo newton per meter so it is also acting downwards so now please remember that if you are going to model the same problem in finite element analysis uh, what you have to do is you have to draw the lines here first and when you are missing this you can take this particular region this particular region and this particular region as one element but when you are going to mesh this particular region you have to mesh this into finite number of elements so when you are meshing this into finite number of elements only you will be able to give the load as uniformly distributed load when you are going for solving it with ANSYS APDL now we have completed our problem now we can go for calculate okay so it is giving a detail to get the detailed report you have to get an access code so if you want to go for an access code i think you have to go for a paid version i think so you can try it now we have obtained the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for this beam so within minutes we have obtained it if you are able to see this you can so this is the shear force diagram for the beam and this is the bending moment diagram you can see it you can see it very nicely it is plotted so it is in positive direction but in hands is apdl but we will not we will be having some uh, difference in the direction so the difference in calculation direction so sometimes this value will be in the upside of the beam and sometimes it will be in the downwards the shear force diagram positive value or negative value those things we can refine it after particular trials and other things these are the so this is what a beam guru is you can try for all problems whatever problem we are going to solve in strength of material second unit beams you can try this using beam guru and you can verify your shear force diagram and bending moment diagram i hope everyone is clear with it now what we can do is we can go for our problem in ANSYS. we can going to we, we can solve our problem in ANSYS. so this is also a structural based problem so what i will do is preferences first thing i will enable is structural property so structural this this working is or uh, this particular analysis is structural analysis so i am enabling it and i am giving okay next i am going for preprocessor in apdl the main thing is we have to select the type of the element what you are going to use for your problem so element type as this is a beam based problem we have to choose a beam element so in the previous problem you might have used a link element and in some problems you might have used a solid element if you are going for a surface based problem you will be going for solid element now you are going for link sorry beam element there are two types of uh, beam elements two node are 188 and three node 189 you can go for two node 188 and you can click ok add it ok answer sorry now we have selected the beam 188 uh, you need not give real constant values for beam in material properties we can uh, assume this properties as we can give it this material is a steel beam so 2 e power 5 newton per millimeter square so whatever values i am giving is it everything is in terms of millimeter and newton so poisson ratio is 0 0.3 these are some basic values and uh, <coughs> sorry a beam is always specified by its cross section uniform cross section so you have to give the value here section in section beam common cross sections you can change it so we can see various cross sections of the beam in the previous day one asked what how can we solve i beam if you want to give i beam if you want to solve i beam how can we solve it so you can find it if you're going for i section you can give the value for i section here you can give the width of the flange you can give the height of the flange and you can solve it if you are now i can solve it with a simple square shape structure so 50 cross 50 
So this is going to be my shape of the cross section of the beam. So I'm going to click. Because of the, it is a square cross sectional beam, and I am clicking OK. I have selected the beam. Now what we are going to do is we have to start to model your problem. So modeling, you are going to create key points. Key points is the coordinates. So this is going to be an one-dimensional analysis. So before creating an one-dimensional lines. we have to create points points are coordinates once we have created the coordinates we will be converting the coordinates into lines once the lines is created from the line it will be converted into elements now we can create key points in active cs first key point is 0, 0 so it is the left extreme most point apply second key point so this is going to be my second key point so i am class i am dividing this cantilever beam as per the problem so e position at the position e it is going to be my second key point so it is at a distance of 1000 mm here it is given in terms of meter so i am converting into mm so second key point i have created next the third key point it is d it is at a distance of 1 here 1.5 it is at a distance of 2500 and apply it. next fourth key point this is going to be my fourth key point already this is 2.5 and plus 2 we will be getting it 4500 apply and now the last key point is here it is at a distance of 5000 mm or 5 meter apply okay now we have got five key points now we can join it with lines once the coordinates are created we have to create lines for it uh, there are options that you can directly go for modeling your element you can draw the nodes directly and you can draw the elements from it so i am following some traditional procedure i am going with it so this is the first line second line third line and fourth line we have created it and i am clicking okay now you can see the difference that when you are going for lines it is of various colors but once you have meshed your component what will happen is everything will be in one radiant color uh, sorry what to say that it will be in some uh, uh, greenish blue color only one color but if you are going for element or lines it will be of different color four lines we are using so four color next step is you are going for meshing in meshing what i told us this region this region this region and this region you should consider as one element because you are going to give only point load here in this region at no point load here but when you are going to mesh this portion from c to d you have to divide this particular uh, length of 2 meter into various number of or a particular count of element say 10 divisions or 20 divisions you can do if you have to split it only then you will be able to apply this udl condition if you want to apply udl or uvl you have to split that particular line into a uh, finite number of elements some countable number of elements you have to uh, split it so now we can go for mesh tool first to mesh we can can mesh this three lines okay uh, so it is asking number of element divisions we can give it as one okay now once again you are clicking the mesh tool once again you click line this particular region i am clicking and number of element divisions i am going to give it as 10 apply so you can see this difference these regions only one element and this particular region it is divided into some 10 divisions so when you are considering the whole problem there are finite elements but in this region alone you are splitting this one line into some 10 divisions and other things okay next what you are going to do is you are going for meshing you are going to select all the things and you are going to click mesh so when you have completed your mesh everything is, is everything is of same color you can visualize this using this node numbers when you enable element numbers you can see it so in this region one element two element and from this region to this region you can see a number of elements here and at last this one region you will be having only one element here and we have completed our meshing step the next step is you are going to give the uh, boundary conditions the boundary conditions for this problem is very simple cantilever beam only at this particular end you are going to give a fixed support and at this region you are going to give some loading conditions so you are going for mesh tool oh sorry you are going for solution in solution you are going to define the loads 
you are going to apply structural loads displacement displacement you are going to give what this particular point so you can click this as key point and you are going to click this so you have to arrest all the degree of freedom all degree of freedom is equal to zero okay now we have created one boundary condition this is constraint one boundary constraint is one end is completely fixed now next we are going for giving the force value for this now we can complete this point loads 3 kilo newton and another 3 kilo newton we can complete it so for the moment dot key points this key point and this key point this these are the two key points or you can select the nodes and also you can give the boundary condition now what is the value is it is going to be fy and the value is minus 3 e power sorry minus 3 e power 3 value apply now you can see it okay now you can see it two loadings two point load are applied at two region next what region next what we have to do is you have to give uniformly distributed load in this particular region for particular uh, for this procedure what you have to go is you will be going pressure you have to click pressure on beams in pressure on beams you have to select this region now you can understand that why we split this into uh, some uh, the, some minimum number of divisions because when you are going for giving pressure on beams you have to select each and every element in this particular region so okay once again i'm giving this one two three four seven eight nine ten we have divided this region into ten divisions so there are ten elements we have to select it like that and we will be giving apply now we can see that apply pressure on beam elements here there is a low load key if the load key is number one then you are giving to the axis and you will be giving the load along the y direction next pressure value in i node and j node they are asking this is in one particular element there will be two nodes i node and j node if both the values of the uh, i node and j node are same then it will be considered as uniformly distributed load if you are going to apply for a uniformly varying load the values what you give in the i to node should be different from that of the j to node so here one kilo newton meter so one e power five and here also one e power five when you give one e power five both the things you are applying uniformly distributed load so for example if you are changing this into two e power five or five e power five then the value what type of load you are giving is you are giving uniformly varying load okay Both solid model and okay, okay, some mirror warning. Okay, and we have completed it. This is how uh, this is how the value of uh, this is how your uh, problem is. You have fixed at one end. We have supplied uh, uh, two point loads, and you are also given some uniformly distributed load. Next, simply we can go for solving this problem. I hope there is no error for solving this problem, and we can start solving it. Mm, okay, you can change the cross sectional value. I think so. Find notes. I'm increasing the cross section because the value what we are giving is. I hope this will solve the problem, or we can once again delete this loads and we can solve it. Okay, yes, that is what. Uh, in if you are going for uh, workbench and solving it, this error will be given in terms of uh, that is uh, your model is subjected to large deformation and other things. The same error is here. Now we have completed the solution. Now the cross section what we have chosen is 500 mm cross 500 mm cross section. And uh, you can say that this is a one dimensional case. How can you visualize the cross section? For visualizing the entire cross section, what you can do is you can oh sorry I will change. You can go for plot controls. And in plot controls, you can go for uh, style. In style, you go for size and shape. And in that, you click display of element and click OK. Now you can see the entire beam, how we have modeled the 3D beam. We can see it. How it will be in 3D, you can visualize it. You go for isometric view, now you can visualize it. If you are giving an eye, eye cross section, your beam will have eye cross section throughout the entire section and it will be like that. And you can also visualize it. Here at this particular region, we have uh, split it into 10 different segments and these things, 
only one element we have considered everything will be everything you can see it here and uh, now what we can do is we can go for uh, getting the post processing or getting the results normally we will be finding the deformed shape deflection in beams in terms of deflection so we are getting a deflection value of 4553 because whatever values we have given it everything is in terms of 10 power 3 so obviously we will be getting a higher value this is what uh, displacement is and uh, Next, you can go for contour plot model solution. You can find the uh, uh, component displacement. Everything is same. Uh, this is how it is going to look like. And you can you can go for uh, getting elemental solution. You can get the value for stress. You can get one versus stress plot. So uh, this is the fixed region. So in the fixed region only, we will be getting more stress. Practically, we will be having this is fixed end. So deformation at this particular point will be more. Sorry, uh, the resistance to deformation will be at uh, deflection will be more at this particular region. So uh, here, so it is given in uh, highly red color. And the main thing is we have to draw. That. Now I I'm, I will bring it back to the uh, one dimensional. So it will be easy for you to uh, plot the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. I will bring it back to one dimension. Okay, this is how it is going to look. Hmm. Okay. Now we can draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. To draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we have to get some support from ANSI skull. And in that, if you are going here, you will be there will be an option here, element table. In element table, first you have to define the table. Uh, what it is, what in the element table it will be doing is, hmm. what in the element table it will do is, uh, it will be, you have to select the nodes and you have to give the uh, you have to say the software to extract the shear force value on this particular node. If you are going to calculate bending moment, this you have to insist the software that you have to calculate the bending moment at these nodes. Uh, if you are able to get the value of bending moment or shear force at every node, uh, it will be drawn continuously and you will be able to get a smooth picture from this. So I will explain this using this. <coughs> Sorry. Define table. So add. So this is what first we have to give it as uh, for e, for shear force diagram you have to give two values. Uh, for bending moment diagram you have to give two values. So for shear force diagram I will give it as SFD one, and uh, we can give it as by sequence number. Just remember that uh, sequence number six and nineteen will be used for drawing the shear force diagram. Next is shear force diagram two. This is another end. This is also by sequence number. You can give it as 19. 6 comma 19 will be used for drawing the shear force shear force diagram for your beam. Apply. Next is you have to draw the bending moment diagram. Bending moment diagram one by sequence number 3 comma 16. 3 comma 16 is going to give you a bending moment diagram. I will say that how you have to extract this bending moment diagram two. By sequence numbers, this is 16. Applying. Okay. Now you can see that this is the four values. Shear force diagram, you will be having giving two values, and bending moment, you will be giving two values. This values you have to give it at one particular point. So you go on for plot results. In plot results, you will go for line element residues. So you can see that element table item at node one and element table item at node j. That is what I changed it. Shear force at D1 and shear force at D2. When you are giving this value of shear force at uh, node 1 and node 2, it will be giving the value of shear force diagram. So you can see it. The only difference is normally it will be the diagram will be in the upside down. Mostly in cantilever beam, the shear force diagram will be positive. Another thing is if you are segregating this element into very finite number of elements or increasing the number of elements, you will be getting a smooth curve. Because if you are uh, it is a. Uh, it is what uh, this is called as. Uh, you are having a UDL here. Sorry, uh, it's UDL here. So you will be having an inclined line here. Inclined line here. Uh, if you are having many finite number of many many small divisions, you can get a smooth line here. And next is you can get bending moment diagram as bending moment one and bending moment two. Apply. So this is how bending moment diagram. Is. This is going to be a parabolic shape and this is going to be a triangular shape. This is why we are not getting a triangular shape. Remember that here only we are given only one element. 
if you are segregating this into some finite number of elements here also we will be getting a uh, inclined line here normally for cantilever beam uh, when we are having a point load you will have rectangular shear force diagram and a, a triangular bending moment diagram and for udl you will be having a triangular shear force diagram and a parabolic bending moment diagram Uh, this can be still clearly observed if you are dividing this element into further small divisions you can get a smooth curve and that is what uh, about the beam problem shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for drawing this you can uh, what is the main advantage is if you are completely modeling a beam in three dimension and giving a load as always we used to say that computation time will be more to make the computation time less and if you want to get some accurate results or uh, whether if you are able to validate the results easily using some standard formula you can always go for one dimensional based problem i hope that everyone is clear with this beam based problem if anyone is having doubt you can get it clarified now because next problem will be a fluid flow problem there will be some difference will be there if anyone is having doubt you can ask in the chat box Uh, participants you can if you have any doubt regarding the beam problem you can ask me in the meantime i will be starting the workbench because only in workbench uh, fluent is available participants if you have any doubt in uh, how to solve a beam problem in axis you can ask me i hope that everyone is clear Oh, okay uh, i hope that the open screen is enabled and uh, now what we can do is okay before getting inside that i will explain this what is computational fluid dynamics and other things okay uh, in structural based problems you have to have this uh, clearly in mind in structural based problems you will be solving the stiffness matrix you will be getting a, a every a matrix for every element and you will be assembling it and uh, you will be getting a global stiffness matrix and you will be solving it based on the governing equation the governing equations are based on the elasticity concepts uh, you will be solving for structural problems for fluid based problems you will be solving uh, uh, the main equations you will solve is you will be solving navier stokes equation and those will be in differential form because uh, you will not get some analytical results when you are going for cft it is a completely a numerical approach so if in analytical approach you are going to find it through one dimensional you are going to you will be getting average velocity only in analytical result but if you are going for computational fluid dynamics you will be getting uh, uh, the values of velocity or pressure at any point in the liquid and uh, in solid based problem you will be modeling the solid domain in fluid based problem you will be modeling the fluid domain fluid domain in the sense if you are going to model a model for a pipe flow problem you will not model the Uh, outer pipe and other things you will be modeling the fluid in the if, if, if the fluid flows through a pipe of uh, 10 mm diameter then you will be drawing a 10 mm cylinder the 10 mm solid cylinder indicates that you have modeled the fluid what it is flowing that is called as fluid domain and the problem what i am going to solve here is uh, i am going to solve a simple internal flow based problem there are various uh, applications of computational fluid dynamics there is a vast uh, there are there is a vast range of applications and people are using for even to predict uh, acoustics behavior of uh, sound waves they are using cvd this is a basic problem what i have decided is i have to i have selected an internal flow problem in internal flow problem what i am going to do is i am going to uh, draw a pipe of uh, i am going to model a flow through pipe of uh, 1000 mm length and 50 mm diameter with some uh, velocity the fluid and other things we can uh, take it in the take it or we can assume the fluid uh, as we proceed with the procedure 
okay and here is there is something fluid flow cfx fluid flow fluent and fluid flow poly flow comparatively cfx uses some different algorithm and fluent uses some different algorithm uh, those things are uh, finite volume method and this is this will be coming under uh, uh, finite element method i so think so in, in two dimensional is that, that is also surface based model surface based uh, modeling it will go for cfx and fluent you can model for three dimensional also but uh, the equations running behind this is different i think i am not clear with it uh, now we can go with fluent <laughs> Only in, only in blue end you will be having more options that you can give many many boundary conditions or many input to the software. Okay, now this we can name it as simple pipe flow problem. Okay, this is a simple pipe flow problem. And uh, as discussed, what you are going to draw is a thousand meter, one meter length pipe and 50 mm, five centimeter diameter. Fluid is going to flow through it. So first I will draw the geometry of the pipe. Uh, this problem also you can go for two dimensional analysis itself. And two dimensional with axisymmetric assumption we can do it. I will say it, how, how it is assumed is uh, assumed as axisymmetric I will say. Because uh, this region is, this is 50 mm. So okay, this is 50 mm. You can model only this half of the domain. You can model this 25 mm of 25 mm with 1000 mm length you can model it and you can you can give symmetry option and you can solve it <coughs> so millimeter we are going to give dimensions in millimeter and you can start modeling it in xy plane sketching you are going to draw a rectangle this everything is similar to that of structural problem the dimension what you are going to give the pipe's length is 1000 mm and uh, this is going to be an axis symmetric assumption so I am going to give this as 25 mm. Why I am giving 25 mm in the sense when this particular region is revolved about this x-axis, you will be getting the pipe of diameter 50 mm. To avoid computational time, I am getting I am using this axis symmetric assumption. Next, I will be going for if you are going for two-dimensional analysis itself, you have to convert your sketch into surface. So sketch I am clicking it. I am clicking this into surface and now the surface will be getting generated. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, now you have modeled your surface. And in computational fluid dynamics, based problems or flow problems, what you have to give is name dissection. In ANSYS, structural problems also you can give. In this, mainly you have to give input section. You have to give name dissection. You, there will be four edges here. Why I am giving the name to selection? You can understand why I am entering inside the solver or while I am getting inside post processing because uh, every model or every solid object or every model you draw, it will be creating a zone or domain. It will be the software will be giving its own uh, zone name. To but it will be difficult. There will be difficult for us to extract the results from the zones name name of the zones what is prescribed by the software. So what we can do is we can give our own name. Just I am clicking this and I am giving the name to selection as wall. And I am getting generate. And this particular region I am giving the name to selection as axis. Because when the surface is revolved about this axis, it will be completing a three dimensional shape. Now I have modeled the pipe with axis symmetric assumption. The output what we are going to get is we will be getting a 1000 mm length pipe of 50 mm diameter. And here in surface body, you have to change this as blue A. As you have modeled your problem, now you can close it. Now you can go for meshing. Okay, uh, the, uh, the in, uh, only in, in computational fluid dynamics or fluid flow problems, you can clearly see the influence of node in your result. Uh, because uh, in thermal based problems, there will be, uh, we'll get some minute values and there will be deviation. If there is any small deviation in your node values, the output parameter will be affected at a great rate. 
so whenever you are going for fluid fluid mechanics or compressible flow based problem or sorry incompressible flow or compressible flow based problem you have to perform a test called as grid independence test the grid in structural based problem we used to say it as node here what we will say is here you will be saying as grid we have to sequentially vary the number of grids for our problem and the result what we can take it from the solution side is Uh, uh, uh result which is not affected by the uh, not e not affected even though we change the grid size or the percentage deviation should be minimum when you are getting the results from two different grids and we can go for meshing and now we can go for a mapped meshing here mm, mapped based meshing and i will be using quadrilateral element itself and we can give an element size of <laughs> Uh, this is the surface I'm selecting, and we can give an element size of 5 mm, 5 mm, and we can generate the mesh. See now you can see a uniform mesh here. I don't say that this mesh is correct, but you have got a uniform mesh. So this is our grid, and the details you can see it here. Statics there are about 1,200 nodes with 1,000 elements. So this is our mesh. Our mesh proper mesh mesh step is complete. In this also we can see named selections, inlet, outlet, wall, and axis. This is what we have prescribed in the first step. The next step is very important. Uh, now you you can see the different in static structural problem. There will not be separate solver for it. But uh, if you are going for uh, uh, fluent or CFX, there will be separate solver opening. Now you can see that. <coughs> is little bit slow okay the mesh step is complete now i am clicking the setup now you can see the solver ansys fluent solver here and uh, these are series parallel or for computing uh, ease of computation you can use a serial uh, based on the gpu connected these are the things and uh, double precision is they were result accuracy in this double precision You can uh, prescribe it. So we can find the difference clearly. The difference in static structural module and uh, someone has enabled the. Who is that? Okay, this is the screen here, and uh, here you can see the code what is running behind it. But in static structural, you can see when you are going for APDL, mechanical APDL also, you can see a separate screen running here. And uh, here there are many icons here. So type what is the type of solver, what is the velocity formulation, what is the time, steady state, or transient, what is the 2D space. Uh, we can start with this 2D space. We have the problem. What we have modeled is a 2D problem. And I have told that I am going for axis symmetric assumption, so I am enabling this axis symmetric. The problem is now an axis symmetric problem, and uh, the fluid what I am going to use is uh, water. I think that water uh, I am not going to specify that particular fluid because I am going to change the density and viscosity. We can go for pressure based solver itself. Uh, normally, what they will use is for uh, compressible flows. They will be going for density density based solvers. Because when pressure or temperature changes at every point, density also changes for compressible fluid. Uh, but in case of uh, incompressible fluid like water and other things, see, you can go for. In, for some cases, you can go for pressure-based solver. This is what. Next is models. In models only, you will be having. Uh, these are some standard models which are given by various authors who have contributed for computational fluid dynamics. Uh, I'm not. is a multi phase flow if you are going for multi phase flow two different phases you are going to use it uh, this set of equations will be enabled if your problem has temperature involved in it you have to enable this energy equation will be enabled and uh, this is the most important thing based on the viscosity there are many models here you can see laminar spatial k epsilon k omega these are various models or uh, if you want to know the if, if you want to say in terms of physics of the problem these are various sets of equations If you are going for laminar problem, there will not be any turbulence in it. Uh, so, so before giving, before selecting the model, what we have to go go and uh, we got to do pre-analysis. 
we can calculate the reynolds number and we can uh, check whether it is laminar or terminal if, if for a pipe flow problem if it is less than 2000 it is going to be laminar so i am assuming that this problem is laminar and we can so uh, many problems there will be turbulence parameter will be there so at that time they will be going for k epsilon or k omega model so when i see when i am kicking k epsilon model see there are many parameters to be included this is an equation with various coefficients uh, polynomial equation with various coefficients you can adjust these things and uh, these are some theory behind it uh, even i am not sure of those theories when you are presenting in a public forum you should be confident about this uh, theories if you are publishing any paper if you are clearly mentioning these theories and presenting or publishing a paper your paper will be surely accepted and now i am selecting laminar flow and i am clicking ok uh, next is materials in materials there is solid and fluid now fluid only we are model only the fluid domain so i am clicking here and uh, now i am changing the fluid we can we can check what are the elements available in the fluid database so uh, these are the fluid materials available see you can see ammonia vapor atomic nitrogen calcium carbonate uh, dicarbon monoxide dicarbon there are many fluids present here and uh, now we can select this water liquid and these are some parameters here density they are given 998 but actually we will for solving problems we will be giving the value of 1000 viscosity value cp value these are the properties of water and we can select this and uh, okay in fluid type we have selected density the water or the fluid what we are going to solve it is uh, solve is the water next is the boundary conditions uh, the basic boundary conditions we are going to see uh, now you can see this why i have used name to selection uh, the name to selection is here you can see the boundary condition uh, the name to the terms what we give inlet outlet wall axis if you have not given any named sections or if you are not given name for that edges here it will be given in terms of some uh, it will it, it will not be present so it if it is not present we can't select it easily and give our boundary condition only for our ease of selecting the edges even when you are inside the solver we are giving named selection and uh, for a fluid to happen there should be pressure difference or there should be a particular velocity for the fluid we can solve this problem with some uh, we can give the boundary condition as input velocity we can give some value and outlet let it let it be it let it exposed to an atmospheric pressure so and in axis in axis this wall is considered as axis and uh, another wall boundary condition you can see in wall also uh, the wall parameters also there are uh, many parameters whether your wall is stationary or moving wall no slip no slip boundary condition in this sense there is no friction in the wall your wall is very smooth so there are also many conditions your wall will also play a, a great impact in your problem so we have assumed that no slip boundary condition for the wall the top surface and now i am giving the inlet value as velocity inlet so these are how we can specify the uh, boundary for your fluid so i am giving here as velocity inlet the velocity value i will for example i can give it as 2 meter per second and i am giving it as okay uh, now what i can do is uh, there will be some solution methods you have to know this uh, this simple simplex piecewise uh, coupled or these are algorithms uh, these equations will be fit inside these algorithms and it will be solved by ansys solver uh, so this is also a theory behind it you need not uh, know for you have to learn more to know about this uh, now to solve in ansys i am just initializing this process i am just initializing initializing uh, colloquially if you want to say from which side i have to start my calculation or i have to specify from which side my computer have to start to calculate from it so i am just initializing it there is also a process called standard initialization standard initialization whether you can start your uh, computing process from the inlet the reason what is it or you can go for hybrid initialization hybrid initialization we can give uh, computer will see to it and now we can give it as run calculation so for example usually computational fluid dynamics problems will be running for 2 or 3 days there are problems like that and uh, after running for those particular days also we will not be able to get the result and this is a small problem we can give it as 100 iteration and we can give it as calculate <coughs> let's see what's the result and in this equation now we can see that uh, uh, these are some convergence parameter uh, there are three equations getting solved here the continuity equation for any fluid flow problem there should be continuity equation and x velocity and y velocity this this is assumed as a 2d problem so x velocity the flow along the x direction and flow along y direction 
and now we are getting a solution which is converge converge solution we are getting this converger how it is getting is so you can see it is getting to solve it is it is getting to start to run from 0 0 0 minus 3 and uh, minus 6 uh, the convergence criteria default value for convergence criteria is 10 power minus 3 so at once all this all these parameters continuity and x velocity and y velocity equation reach 10 power minus 4 your problem will be stopped or your calculations will be stopped and you can your solution is converged and you can take the results for this now you can see everything is in 10 power 5, minus 4 so once it has crossed 10 power minus 3 your equation will be getting slow you can do post processing in this solver module itself or there is an uh, uh, separate module or separate uh, next step available from that also you can go for uh, post processing here so results, this is from cfx they are given this attached to this to fluent <coughs> Post processing through this results module will be very easy compared to that of in uh, modular in ANSYS modular solver modular itself. If you are using it, okay. Now I will show you that while we are selecting axis symmetry, you can see this here. This is like a piece of cake uh, cut. So when this is revolved, it will be having completely 360 degree. So when you are giving for axis symmetric assumption, your image will be like this. If you are not giving axis symmetric assumption, your image or your uh, your object will be like a rectangle. This is axis symmetric, so you can see here. Still, you can, you can see here. It is like a it is like a portion which is cut from a cylinder. When this is revolved, your problem will be axis symmetric. And okay, now we can see the how the pressure contours or uh, velocity contours for this problem. And uh, okay, now we have selected this. We, this is the way how we have to get the okay uh, this is how we are getting this is a half model but what we want need is we need a this is for 25 mm length what we need is we have to get a plane across it so we can go for mirroring <laughs> mirroring about x is that so now you can see it clearly uh, if you are uh, Aware of the concept, the fluid mechanics concept, we will be saying that for flow through pipe, the flow will be parabolic. You can see it, it will be like this parabolic. For flow or a flat plate, the, the, the boundary layer will be increasing like this. And uh, a basic concept is that the velocity at the walls will be zero. If you are, if you are strong with the fluid mechanics concept, or this is a basic concept, uh, you can interrupt with the results what you obtain. So the blue color indicates that our velocity is uh, zero. At walls, there is no slip boundary condition, so velocity is zero, and velocity is gradually increasing. And at the center or the axis, you are getting the maximum velocity. You can see it. maximum velocity of we are getting uh, uh, 2.37 meter per second velocity you are getting. And uh, if you are still giving some low viscosity fluid or other things, you can clearly see how a boundary layer is developed. So the number of scales what we have use your number of colors what we have used you can try with increasing the colors Let's say 25 and okay. <laughs> just in increasing the number of colors for this problem so you can see okay hmm. now you can see this hmm. now you can see this so at this region, uh, you have to remember that the flow of fluid in it will change into 100. You can visualize clearly. So. And changing that and diluting this contour colors, increasing the number of colors so that you can see a clear result. Or what is the physics that is happening in this problem? 50 is good. 50 itself is better. Okay, I will start from this region. So at this velocity, at this point, we have specified the velocity. It is the inlet region, and then the inlet region, you can see that the velocity is low. It is at the range of 1.5 or while it is entering inside the pipe, it is low. So you can see that it is following or it is forming a parabolic path here. So and it is moving, you can see the velocity shades, it is gradually getting thicker. 
gradually getting thickened in the sense what is happening is the flow of fluid is or the velocity is gradually increasing and that what one particular region it has achieved the free stream velocity free stream velocity is the velocity what we gave it at the inlet 2 meter per second or it is the value what we got it at the, at the inlet and now you can see that it will be straight first it will be parabolic then next it will be straight this is a flow of laminar flow inside a pipe you can see this this is a velocity contour uh, okay when we are zooming out look this also you can see clearly so you can see the parabolic shape here i hope that everyone is <coughs> sorry everyone is able to visualize it clearly and next what you can do is you can also get another contour the important contours i will say you mm. can get pressure contour so this is how pressure contour will look it is going to be atmospheric pressure and it is gradually uh, decreasing so the value of pressure with respect to velocity and uh, it is also going down and it is getting decreased uh, this is how a uh, velocity contour looks like if you want to uh, get the value of value or uh, uh, one particular parameter single parameter value you want to get one particular result you can go for this calculator function calculator you can click this i want to get the velocity at the outlet velocity at the inlet i have given it so i need velocity at the outlet because pressure at the outlet we can find it. okay we can now calculate the pressure at the inlet the pressure at the inlet be unknown uh, what i will do is i'll go for area average the location what i have to choose is inlet at inlet you have to give the pressure value so it is 1.1 pascals so you can see this this is how you will be getting it if you want to get the velocity average velocity at the inlet it is 2 meter per second that is what we gave it as a boundary condition inlet 2 meter per second area average the parameter velocity it is inlet uh, this is what you can find it uh, you can solve a 3d problem also the 3d problem what you will do is you will be modeling a cylinder and you will be simulating it and now there are possible for uh, simulation also okay okay now i will show this uh you can go for streamlines option uh, normally for fluid flow you will be going for 3d streamline or streamline uh, so from inlet now you can see this so these are streamlines streamlines are the uh, Our, our fluid flow is always represented in terms of streamline so once you have drawn the streamlines you can see it this is how fluid flow will be there streamlines the fluid flow is represented in terms of uh, lines and the streamlines also you can change it you can use it as arrows to indicate the flow direction in a longer view you can't see it uh, next is you can if you want to simulate it usually they will go for simulation If you are uh, you are going if you are product based if you want to explain your product something you can go for uh, you'll be going for animation here and once you can click it you can see this uh, you can see uh, okay uh, the the size of the particle what it is specify default is bigger than that of our model what we have used so you can see very big. see moving molecules move oh, this is an example uh, video uh, this is a plain problem or uh, it is a simple problem so the visualization may be looking very simple but if you are modeling a complex geometry it will be very interesting for you how the fluid is flowing for example if it is a combustion based problem or if you want to model a, a flow through a turbine or uh, you are want to model a swell swell a rotating swell Uh, this video animations and these streamlines will be very helpful using that we can tap the what is the value for pressure or temperature at that particular region we can get it and uh, this is how this is one basic example for uh, a bit is and uh, that day and okay uh, this is enough i hope so this is more than enough for knowing about cfd uh, and once again i want to say that you can try to solve the problems from uh, rk bands of fluid mechanics and machinery or uh, uh, compressible flow problems based from uh, sm yaya yeah, yeah, compressible fundamentals of compressible flow you can try that problem uh, 
uh, the problems what you want to try this in nans is this you have to try a problem where there are maximum boundary conditions are there uh, the the length or diameter of your problem is fixed you have to select problems like that and you have to solve it uh, for exam point of view there will be some problems you have to predict the unknown parameters those problems you can't solve it a, a problem with all parameters input only one or two values we need to find out you can solve that problems and you will be getting the result i hope so i have given overview about this computational a problem in computational theory how, how to solve using computational theory dynamics i have given i have explained only using the gui of so software uh, that is it is cfd is a version uh, there is a one if you if one tries to learn cfd he has to spend most of his time because the problems uh, everyone is facing will be different for his one problem he has to model a different set of equations or he will be having some different uh, mathematical modeling and for justification and other things uh, the evolution of cfd has Uh, brought a, it, it it has brought a great support to researchers who are working in thermal engineering field because for uh, strength of for uh, structural problems what we can do is you can simply model a structure and you can analyze it you can find the stress strain or you can go for tensile testing and other things but if you are going for uh, a thermal based problem what you want to do is you will be relying mostly on experimental results and you can't do variations for example engine analysis or if you are going to find a seal in the gas turbine so at that Uh, regions uh, computational fluid dynamics have helped a lot if you are strong with mathematical modeling or if you are strong with what is happening behind the software uh, you can model your problem and you, and you can also validate your result you should be having the confidence that the model what i have run is uh, the valid model i'm not running a model for uh, some uh, i'm not selecting some wrong equations and uh, enabling it and this is what i know about uh, the cfd and other things i am also a beginner with cfd i am also learning whenever time is possible i am also getting some new informations about cfd and i hope so everyone is clear with it and we can wind up the session and if participants if you have any doubt you can ask me gerald sir are you there sir yes sir yes sir yes uh, now i will stop my presentation sir participants if you have doubt you they can ask me sir <laughs> participants if you have any doubt you can ask feel free otherwise you can type in comment box we will share there used to be a participant who asked a question about cfd i hope that he is not there today okay. i hope everybody understand very well uh, <laughs> participants have no doubt now sir oh. uh, okay. i got a, a, a any more nice presentation in comment box okay okay if you have any doubt or if you have any problem you can mail to us you can mail to any of our email id you can go to our website and you can mail it so everyone is a beginner for this particular domain it's continuous learning we are working on it if you have any doubt you can also ask me the uh, prabharan sir shall i share the feedback link sir yes sir yes sir Yeah, you share it now. And, uh, okay, okay, I'll give you share copy. So please post it in YouTube also, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I already posted, sir. Okay. <laughs> Participants, you can uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask in comment box. Otherwise, you can uh, if you have any, any doubt, you can ask through our WhatsApp group also regarding a fee and simulation. Uh, if you have any doubt any time you can ask through whatsapp definitely we will help our level best are facing any difficulty in solving any projects also do let us know we will also support our projects we can up to do so okay sir uh formally we will wind up sir so
on behalf of Ramkun Institute of Technology, Department of Mechanical Engineering, RIT MECAT Center, IEA. I would like to thank Mr. K. Mudan Ashton Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Ramkun Institute of Technology. Uh, today also we had a very fruitful session, sir. Uh, one thing, uh, whatever we study uh, in theoretical point of view, as well as the mathematical point of view, uh, one thing is very important, the practical approach is very important. Uh, in FEA aspect, uh, whatever we study in mathematical approach, whatever we have derived in derivation, uh, whatever in that problem, uh, comparison is that simulation. Uh, our Amudan sir, uh, up to so far, uh, he served six more session uh, how to solve the problem in uh, APDL as well as uh, ANSYS workbench. Uh, definitely, it will be very helpful, sir. Uh, today also, we had a wonderful session regarding uh, CFD. Uh, this is a, uh, one of the uh, everybody feel this is for tough. Uh, now we have uh, some idea and also we have uh, some confidence. Uh, thank you once again, sir. Uh, participants, uh, thank you all for presently watching our FEA series. Uh, don't miss any series in future session. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Amudan, sir. Thank you, sir. Participants, please subscribe to our channel so that we will be updating you with the upcoming webinars also. If you subscribe with it, you can get the information. Because we'll be conducting webinars in future also. So for continuous information, you can subscribe to it. Sir, Brito, sir. Hello. Brito, sir. Bravar and sir. Sir, tell me, sir. Uh, whether uh, the link is posted in YouTube, sir. Okay, sir. Already posted, sir. Uh. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, thank you, Amudan, sir. It's not posted in YouTube link, I, YouTube, I think, so please check it. The bonds are already posted, sir. Sir, no, no, it's not posted. Please call them and inform them. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm, okay. 